Today is really rainy, but I wanted to take the time to invite you to come with me. We'll take a look outside. It's, it's wet. I'll get a little wet. You won't get wet at all. I promise. <laughs> um, I wanted to invite you to come with me. I want to talk about salvation. And there is only one name given among men whereby which we must be saved. And how, if we're not careful, when we create organizations and efforts and different kind of things, we actually take that glory of salvation that should only be ascribed to Christ, and we actually take that and embed it sometimes in our organizations so that people are, they start holding on to what you might call a shadow instead of holding on to the reality that can just be found in Christ. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that and uh, we're going to take a look outside and then get in the car. Sorry for all of the, um, I have my hands full and carrying you too. So this is going to be, it's raining. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to get here in the garage and ah, get out of this rain. Yikes. I hate doing your hair up nice and then you run outside and it gets all wet. Okay, I'm going to turn you off while I get you in the car. I'll, you'll be all confused. Here we go. We're heading into work. And at the same time, we're going to be talking about Jesus and salvation especially in regard to Jesus being the only way of salvation. Now, um, I'm calling this the Simon series because just like when Jesus was carrying the cross, there was this guy named Simon who was just walking by and he was snagged and pressed into service. And um, um, you might be just going by and you got snagged and pressed into service and watching this video. Uh, except the difference is Simon he just had to carry the cross for a little while if you keep watching this video you're going to find your whole life being challenged and potentially impacted if you keep watching this video series so I hope you'll do so and uh, today our conversation will be on uh, pretty much a monologue since I can't hear what you have to say although I'm sure you have lots of thoughts and go ahead most of the places or many places where this will be posted, there will be an opportunity for you to give con comments. So let's get your thoughts too. Uh, let's talk about Jesus and salvation and the tendency of organizations to actually infringe on the glory of God. You know, the scripture says that Jesus is the only name given among men whereby which we must be saved. In other words, salvation is only in Christ. Now, we, of course, want to uh, build effective organizations, and this is where we can test to see if we have crossed the line. If we start wrapping up salvation in our organization, we actually begin to infringe on God's own glory. Now, I'm going to not talk a minute. Last time I made this turn, it was a little uh, difficult keeping my gear shifting. So just, just hold on for a second while we get around the corner here. Got a hold of you and uh, got in the right gear. There we are making the corner. Okay, now we're back on uh, track here. Um, so anyways... We want to build effective organizations, and here's where we kind of go across. If we start wrapping up in the identity of our organization, salvation that's only found in Christ. And when my husband and I were first believers, we were in a ministry to the cults. And truly, this is one of the hallmarks of all cults, is they say, you need um, us to actually experience salvation and there, there's no other name not any name of any church or any denomination or any group that we need for salvation 
salvation is only in Christ and we know all about Christ through the revealed Word of God. Now, true teachers can extend our knowledge of how to live out the kingdom. And indeed, they should do that because that is their role. And as long as they do that, just extend our knowledge of Christ himself, that's a great thing. But if we start binding people to us in that they feel like, they need our special knowledge or special revelation or special wisdom in order to be all the things that they should be in the, the kingdom, then we're crossing the line. So teachers can cross the line, organizations can cross the line, and let me tell you one of the ways that you might not think of uh, that people can cross the line. <clears throat> in Acts, we see that one of the things that the Ecclesia did, the body of Christ did, was they took care of the needs of their community. We call these uh, needs our responsibility to meet the needs of, around us. And whenever God gives us responsibility, he gives us the authority to actually carry out those um, uh, uh, responsibilities. So we so for a shorthand, flip note way of talking about this, we call this the social authority. In the social realm, I am hearing some ministries arise that actually they're gaining power in people's life because, um, well face it, we live in kind of a frightening era. The future looks a little dark and um, <laughs> to, to be honest with you, it looks a little scary at times. Well. When people are afraid, then uh, other people can come along and use that fear to bind people to themselves and say, hey, I have the answer for our physical salvation. If you come to me, I can help save you physically. Now, we know that that did happen in Egypt, that God called Joseph to make provision for the people and thereby he actually saved physically uh, Israel through that, that terrible drought, that seven, year, seven years of famine that they had. But we ought not to think that we are Joseph and that we can start calling people to ourselves and binding people to ourselves or our organization or even worse, selling them products. Uh, I've heard so many things going on lately that like, don't people understand that God is a jealous God and he is not going to give his glory to anyone else? And part of his glory is he is uh, the provider. It, he is God the provider. So we ought to leave him in the role of provision. Now true, we may want to do uh, certain things. Maybe God has given us a vision and a calling. We have to be true to that. But let's understand where the line is. The line is this. Salvation is only in Christ. His provision is his provision. He provides to us and through us sometimes, but ultimately it is only him. And we ought, as we build things, to make sure that we always keep Christ center and forefront. Very happy. Salvation is only in Christ. Thanks for joining.